Today it's Fender versus Fender. We're going to be putting to the test the new Player Plus Stratocaster versus its American counterpart, the Ultra. Stay tuned to see how they stack up. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. I'm Kip Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for our custom-designed t-shirts. And you, too, can dress like Chris and Cooper. Do I don't it. know if that's an endorsement or a reason for them to stay off the website. You just, we gotta find out, they gotta find out for themselves. You know, like, once you put the shirt on, you start to act like us, start that's to play right. like us. I've been playing like, just like Cooper. That's cool. We were just talking about it, playing over changes and doing, yeah. I'm just, stuff. Next time I'm struggling, I'll just put on the shirt and the hat. And yeah, dude, that's where it's at. It's like Mike. <laughs> so anyways, so today we are doing a comparison that I think a lot of you have been interested in. I know we have been mm -hmm. uh, between the new Player Plus Stratocaster and the Ultra Stratocaster because what we've said in the video so far is that the Player Plus is to the Player Series what the Ultras are to the Pro 2 Series. Exactly. I mean, it's... It's, I think what a lot of people are drawing, like that conclusion without Fender even really saying right. it, you know, but it's hard to not notice a lot of the similarities. This is a very modern guitar that sits at the top of that yeah. kind of line of Mexican built guitars. It keeps the Strat uh, recipe intact, yeah. nothing's too crazy, um, but there is like a slightly less adorned version right below it. I, I do think that, uh, the Player Plus has made a really compelling case against even guitars above it, you know? Yeah, and that's um, what we were talking about in one of our most recent videos, yeah. that if you haven't seen, you make sure you subscribe and, and uh, turn on notifications so you can see that. We compared uh, the Player and Player Plus uh, versions mm -hmm. uh, for Tele and Strats, and yeah, one of the things that kept coming up is the fact that the Player Plus is so good and the features are so compelling that one might be tempted to have that versus an American performer or, nay, may I say, a Pro 2? Yeah. You know, I think if you have the money and you're looking in the Ultra, uh, the Ultra's pretty compelling. And, yeah. you know, but this is half the price. Yeah, it's and half so the it's price. And so it's a compelling case on its own. Now, what's most compelling just looking at this guitar right now is the finish. The Mango Chamoy? Yeah, I think so. So if you buy it anywhere outside of Alamo Music, this would be Tequila Sunrise. Right. Uh, but, but in here, San Antonio... It's like an Alamo exclusive colorway, I think. It's called Mango uh, Chamoy. Mango Chamoy. And, yeah, if you didn't see any other previous videos, you can go check those out. But noiseless pickups... Well, let's, let's go spec by spec and, yeah. and see what is the same and what is different. Let's start at the top, because this is the same. They both have locking tuners. Locking tuners, and if uh, you probably won't be able to see it now, but they both have a really pretty kind of metallic logo, which yeah. is really nice. Uh, both of them say Fender 75 on the back because they were made this Isn't year. Is it the same string tree, too? Um, no. No, so different string trees. That's interesting. That's, I think that first came out on the uh, Elites back when. It's a nice, it's a nice tree, yeah. you know. So, um, yeah, so following down there, the, the radiuses are different. The radii. Radii, Chris. <laughs> I was an English major. <laughs> yeah, I'm so yours it. has? Um, so this one has, I believe, 12-inch radius, mm -hmm. and the Ultra is a compound radius. Compound from? Is it from 9.5 to 14? Yep. I know my specs. Yep. It's all good. Frets are, I think, different too, right? Aren't these the narrow tall? And those are the medium jumbo? Medium jumbo, narrow tall. These are not stainless steel frets because you have to go up Lux. one even more yeah. to the Ultra Lux. They're the same material though, these two frets. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when it comes down to it, radii on, you know, frets, it's an interesting case. I don't think you notice it a ton when you're playing a guitar a lot, but when you play them right next to each other, especially these two, it's definitely very noticeable. I think if you're very heavily adapted to a particular radii, or radius on your guitar, <laughs> um, you are going to have a preference. So I have, because I, most of my guitars are Fenders, right? And I've got a Les Paul and some other stuff. When I've gone to a guitar that's very flat all the way across, uh, it bothers me. 
I, you know, I don't notice it at first, I notice it eventually. Uh, if I go to a guitar that's very round, unless the setup is like perfect, uh, then I notice it every time I bend a note. Yeah. But I think 12 is a good compromise. I think this is the best of both worlds. Yeah. You know, because where you're like, here's, we've said this, but in case you haven't seen another video, it bears repeating. Radius comes into play based upon how you're playing. The rounder the radius, the more comfortable it is going to be making chord formations like that. Okay? Even up the neck. Okay? If you're playing kind of the rhythm and lead stuff like Hendrix did, that becomes very important. The flatter the radius comes into play if you're playing fast and if you're bending a lot because a round radius is going to fret out. You're going to take your B and you're going to bend it up and it's going to hit the curvature of a higher fret on the kind of where the D string sits or the G string sits and it's going to choke out. So that's kind of where all of this comes into play. So flatter tends to be faster and more comfortable for bends. Router tends to be more comfortable for chords. The idea of a compound is you tend to chord down here and you tend to solo up here. So you've got your cowboy chords and your shwilly shwilly and everything's great. This is kind of an all across the board middle of the road. Yeah. And that's what, what nine and a half was actually. Yeah. So from seven and a half. Yeah. Right? From seven and a quarter. Oh, so, yeah. So these also have different uh, neck profiles, I mm -hmm. believe. So yes. this modern C and I think that's a modern D. Modern D. Yeah. It's definitely kind of a flatter kind of on the back and on the sides because yeah. of the D shape. And then this has a very nice feel. They both feel great, but this has that supernatural feel to it. Supernatural. It's like supernaturally smooth. They both have really nicely rolled fret edges, mm -hmm. which of all the things we're talking about, That's, gotta be the best, yeah. you know. You know, I have an old Strat that has that just from playing. Yeah. And that's the, that's the idea is this, it has that played and feel. Your guitar would kind of get like this if you played it nonstop for 10 years, like I did. Of course, it also needs a refret, but that's another story. Um, so yeah, it's a great, great feeling neck in both cases. Yeah. Check this out. That's uh, a strap button for locking tuner. I mean, locking a strap button, strap lock. They're called it's, strap locks. Yeah, Cooper. well, locking tuners, <laughs> strap locks, whatever. <laughs> Does yours have this? No, I actually have a locking tuner right there. No, you don't. Yeah, it puts the banjo string on there. Um, <laughs> no, mine does not. It has a regular strap button, ultra. It's got to have some upgrades that are not available on here. So, yes, there is strap locks on the American Ultra. And here's your public safety or public service announcement. Just because it has strap locks does not mean you're supposed to try to spin your guitar around yourself. But if you do do that, please record it and send it to us. Um, and we'd love to see it. Where you're smacking your bassist in the head. So, all right, so working our way down. So we've got strap locks here, regular strap buns there. We've got the very, very awesome uh, American Ultra kind of carved and scooped heel and horn here. This is probably my favorite part. Yeah. It's, a, it's really kind of hard to even see this on camera, but the amount of wood is so much thinner on this heel uh, at the neck versus on a typical Strat. Um, and then it's it's got this angle to it. It's carved out here on the back of the horn, which is where it really matters uh, because that's where your hand is. I've got a PRS, so I'm gonna say this. PRS will do the scoop in the front, which aesthetically looks really good, but typically your hand's not really benefiting from it. It does in this case. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. You've got a more just traditional. Very traditional, which is fine. Yeah. It's all right. It's yeah. worked since 1954. Yeah, we're all used to that. Um, so it's cool. It would have been nice to see even just like the American Pro style little cutoff there, but then then it's like you're then, stepping then on you're too many really toes. really close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so when I jumped the gun earlier, I did say that they both have noiseless, which is the case. Now, these are called Player Plus Noiseless. Those are Generation 4, I believe. Or 5, I think. There is a generation number tied to these pickups, yeah. and there's not on here. There was a comment on our channel. Can you do a talk about the differences between those pickups, um, these Noiseless and those Noiseless? I, can you speak to that, or? Um, so here's the, yeah, Fender has not really released a lot of specific specifications about the difference in the pickups. What I'm going to tell you is my unofficial suspicion. I think those are Gen 1s, is what I think they are. I think they're the first generation noiseless pickups, which by the way, if I'm not mistaken, also shows up on things like 
the Air Clapton Signature Strat, which before that had lace sensor pickups. So what we're working through is just noiseless pickup technology um, with tweaks along the way. Uh, they're all, in some respects, very similar, and the goal the whole time is to work toward more of a non-noiseless traditional Strat pickup. Um, and, the, and really what that is, is is making sure that you don't lose a lot of the high end. And I don't really experience that with either of these guitars. No. Um, I think these sound really good when you're playing this. I remarked it sounded phenomenally good. Um, but I think both of these serve that single coil tone pretty well. Yeah. You know, the, the way that noiseless is achieved is with another coil. And you can do that on the pickup itself, or some other manufacturers will do like a dummy coil in the back, whatever it is, that does cut potentially on the high end side of the, the frequencies. Yeah. So the goal is to do that as minimal or not at all yeah. and still have a quiet single coil pickup. And so I think the technology is there, honestly. I think yeah. it's kind of splitting hairs at this point. For sure. But um, that's, that's the difference. Um, that has a different font that says noiseless on it. <laughs> it's a different font. That's kind of more like a futuristic robot font. And we got like a nice hot rod kind of Which is why I think those are first. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the same font that you see on some old yeah. noiseless, which is cool. It's yeah. fine. They sound good. They're good yeah. enough for Clapton, so um, they're good enough for me. Switching. So you got a little push push. Okay, this is where I'm going to just outright say I have a preference. It's on this guitar. Yeah. Because yes, I have the scrumptious switch. The S1 is stealthy, it's scrumptious, it's superfluous. No, it's not superfluous. It's <laughs> splendid. Uh, what other S vocabulary words can we come up with? Um, it's okay. So yeah, I think this is a better switch, better implementation, because you push, and you push again to turn it off, and yeah. it's very easy, and it's right there. And what switching combinations does this do? So this spoiler alert, and this, um, add in your neck pickup into positions one and two, which would be just bridge or bridge in middle. Yeah, so you get these two, or you get all three these with three. it in. Yeah, and um, this does not have a push-push, this has a push-pull, and the pull, if you're lucky, you get one like I have right here where it's sitting just a hair higher than the other ones, and you can really get under there, and it's easy to pull. Some of these that we've seen have been so nicely flushed with the others. Just like the other two knobs. Yeah, yeah, that it looks a little less obvious, but it's also really hard to get under there on the fly. On the Strat. Like, yeah. it's not a problem on the Tele because it's a narrow knob. You can grab it and pop it up. But yeah. on the Strat, we're, yeah, I mean, we're just got to be honest here. If you get one of these and it's not raised up just a little bit like on this guitar, Take a thick pick and put it under and just jimmy it up around and bring it up. It'll help a lot if you want to utilize that. Um, now, if you're not shift, you know, switching on the fly in the middle of a song, yeah. it's probably not that big of a deal anyway. But uh, yeah, I do prefer this um, compared to that implementation yeah. to do the exact same thing. Probably so. the only time that you're ever going to have permission to take a thick pick. Um, so then, bridge. This is a more similar style to that. They are both block saddles. You can tell that this has a different finish to it. These are actually, this is surprising. Okay, so Fender's pretty efficient, but the American-made guitars are pretty much made by hand. These are polished by hand one wow. by one. That's cool. It's kind of surprising, isn't it? It's very surprising. Um, There's a guy, that's his job. Polished saddle, saddle polisher. polisher. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, that's been a job for years and years, just different types of saddles, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, two-point trim, feels pop, good, looks pop good. Pop-in arm. Pop-in arm, I believe this is a... I believe so, yeah. Yeah. I don't play with a, a tremolo slash vibrato slash whammy bar, so I haven't done it in there, but I'm I have been playing with a whammy bar on guitar ever since Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I just can't. You gotta do it, so. So yeah, I, they both have the same switching. I'm gonna play the same thing on both of them and go through, we got the Hot Rod Deluxe, EQs are all right in the middle. A Little more reverb than usual, than I usually play with on the demos, but I think it just sounds really nice. They're both very deep, full Strat sounds because they're both Strats. And uh, just with you know a little bit of pick, a little bit of finger picking, the reverb, it's just really nice sound on these pickups, mm -hmm. so. 
Yeah, check it out. So there you have it, Cooper's luscious tones through the Player Plus Stratocaster versus the American Ultra Stratocaster. This was a little heavier, I noticed when we switched. Yeah, it's not too heavy, but you can tell it's a little chunkier, which I kind of like sometimes. It makes me feel like the guitar is more rock and roll. I think I know why. 
Mm. Oh, this is a theory, but I think I'm pretty sure. So I think this has more pieces to make the body. And I don't know why, but like, you remember like old 70s Les Pauls were like that. And they weighed more than like, you know, black hole. I mean, they just, <laughs> you know, like boat anchors. Yeah. Um, and I, most of the ultras are just two pieces of alder. Or, and you're losing so much mass. Yeah, I don't think know, that, that probably takes like a a, some of it, but there. probably not that much. Uh, but both fantastic guitars. Yeah, really nice. Both it, have some of the coolest. I, you know, I'm still on the fence about Mango Chamoy, <laughs> but the American Ultra line and the Player Plus line have unique finishes and some of the coolest ones, I some think. Some of the coolest yeah. colors. I love Cobra Blue. This is my I, yeah. I have said since that came out, I want a Cobra Blue HSS that is on my wish list. So That's just, a good one for sure. I love the color. I need another HSS Strat in my life. So After you get the 335, yeah, we'll be talking 335 is also on my list, so is J45. I have a growing list. Mm -hmm. so it's been a while since I bought a new guitar. We all do. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think that if you have, like Chris said earlier, if you got American Ultra Money, this will never disappoint. This is going to be fantastic you get forever it. You're guitar. You're going to love the guitar. Um, but they have done a really cool thing where they have made a lot of the compelling features of this guitar available on a more accessible Half the price. price. Yeah. Half the price. And, you know, a thousand bucks is nothing to sneeze at. But if you have about a thousand bucks, it's really hard to find a better quality Strat uh, or Strat-like guitar from anybody. Um, I, I always prefer to just go back to the original Fender. But, uh, yeah, a thousand bucks for a really compelling guitar. I do understand why you might struggle to go a few hundred dollars more for a performer or a pro, but at twice the price, if you are looking to spend that much money and you're considering an Ultra, you will not be disappointed. Just buy the guitar. Yeah. Just buy it, you're gonna love it. Any of the Ultras, any of the Player Pluses, like hopefully we can get some more Ultra Tellies and stuff in here, do that comparison, do an HSS comparison. There is no Nashville Ultra, but if there was, you know, it'd be really cool, first of all. And we do that comparison. Um, Fender should do a Nashville Ultra. That would be very cool. Um, but yeah, all the Player Plus series guitars have been super awesome since we've gotten them in. Same thing with Ultras. It's like hard to pick, you know, but when it comes down to it, it's a really special kind of new addition to the line. I, yeah. I like it a lot. Well, if you're in the market for a Stratocaster, we hope this video helped you. If you'd like more information on either of these, including the color options that are available, go to our website. What is it? Uh, alamomusic.com. That's what All it right. is. Hop on there. You can chat with someone. They can give you the specs. They can help you pick out a specific guitar from our inventory and get it to your hot little hands with joy and uh, exceeding happiness. That is our hope to you. Because at the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is the Cobra Blue HSS Stratocaster that I hope to have under my Christmas tree. Or it's the guitar that you're playing. One or the other. So, if you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, keep coming back for more, and we'll see you next time.